Good evening, everyone. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with the National Weather Service. Thanks for watching Alaska Weather with us on this 26th of June. As always, we encourage you to stay up to date with your local weather information by calling the Alaska Weather Information Line at 1-800-472-0391, finding your weather information on NOAA Weather Radio or the Marine Band, or log on at weather.gov slash Alaska or use mobile.weather.gov on your mobile device. If you can't find what you're looking for, let me know. David.Snyder at NOAA.gov is how you find me through email. Let's take a look at what's going on. We've got a lot of heat across southern parts of Alaska, and the National Weather Service folks in Juneau want you to be aware that if you are moving through Skagway or planning to do some hiking on the Chilku Trail, the water could be coming up along the trail in spots. Of course, the National Park Service does a tremendous job uh, working on trail mitigation all year long there, and uh, as they're doing that, uh, it's very possible, though, it could have a little bit of water here and there along the trail. So portions of the trail uh, have been known to be inundated with water in situations like this, and the forecast is to bring the Taya River up as we go through your Thursday and Friday due to record high temperatures, or at least near record high temperatures, as we go through the region. So again, the Taya River expected to come up with the extreme heat coming through south central and into southeastern Alaska. The river crest will probably uh, progress uh, higher and higher each evening as the heat comes up. So again, hikers uh, be extra careful if you're moving through that area. Uh, here's another part of this. Uh, warm weather is going to continue through your Friday there, at least, and probably into the weekend. We're looking at temperatures this afternoon that are making it into the upper 60s to mid-70s. Record high temperatures are in the 80s, even 90 degrees in Haines back in 1982. Thursday's forecast brings those temperatures into the low to mid-70s for many locations. Ketchikan could hit almost 80. Juneau, 80 degrees. The record high for Thursday, 79 back in 1953. Friday's forecast, even hotter there. Uh, for Haines, that would be 80 degrees. 72 in Sitka, Petersburg, 76, and 80 in Skagway. All of those are tying or at least pushing the, the uh, envelope there for record heat. Uh, 82 on Friday in Juneau would be a new record high. So uh, forecasters are watching that carefully. And this only goes through Friday. It does look like the heat could continue on into Saturday and the weekend for sure. Uh, as we're looking up toward the uh, Susitna Valley, the Yentna River also or around Squetna is running high due to glacial melt. So that's not a surprise. That happens when we get into these heat situations. And dense smoke advisories posted for the Kenai Peninsula. Now, if you are planning to drive from Homer up to Kenai through Soldotna and on the Sterling Highway up to Anchorage, or you're coming down from the valley in the Anchorage area going down to get some fish, uh, you need to be aware that smoke along the Sterling Highway has not been very good lately. In fact, visibilities have been poor, and it's expected to continue and likely worsen during the evening hours there as the air cools off, that air settles down, gets into the valleys, and really makes for a, a poor travel situation. So our advice is to check in with the Alaska Department of Transportation. 511.alaska.gov is a great resource for you to get information on travel plans, no matter where you're going and when you're going, but especially right now, uh, they've got all the details on any closures and delays, and some of those have been significant. So make sure uh, you're planning ahead, uh, and uh, they're recommending extra ice in the cooler and uh, extra gas and uh, probably a couple extra potty breaks on the way, right? So be advised, be careful, and be safe, and that's a good way to do that. Uh, we're also, again, watching for a potential high water there around the Taya River. Now, fire danger... Uh, extreme fire danger is certainly coming up into those higher uh, indices of fire danger as we get into the weekend. This is probably going to get a lot worse over the next several days, especially for South Central and especially for the interior there. So uh, be extra careful with fire. Make sure you check in with wildfire managers before you do any burning uh, around your area and make sure you're being careful no matter if you're camping or just having a good time out at the shoreline there with friends there. This is fire danger updated as of this afternoon. Here's a look at the visible satellite picture, and we've got high pressure sitting across the interior, really scrubbing away a lot of the clouds. We did have a disturbance working into the Yukon yesterday, and you can see the clouds that remain because of that. And now a lot of instability is working its way up against the higher terrain of southeast. A few of these showers and maybe even a thunderstorm could kind of dribble over the higher terrain as that goes. Out across the west, low pressure sitting here south of the Alaska Peninsula. That's bringing up a strong southerly flow across the west. Kind of widespread rain and drizzle out across the western coast moving into the Seward Peninsula. Nome getting wet today. Kotzebue Sound region looking kind of dreary. And then we've got another low way out across the west. But right in between, a ridge of high pressure. The main one's right here across the interior, but we have another lobe of that kind of working its way in. And because of that, this may pass through, and then the whole situation kind of resets as we go through the weekend 
and into next week. The lines with a little squiggly top, that's a smokestack, and that means smoke could be dense where you are across the interior and across the Kenai Peninsula. High pressure is keeping that locked in place right now with a very stable air. A lot of that's not very uh, able to mix up. You would think on a warm day we would have those rising columns of air. Uh, the problem is aloft off the surface of the earth, the air gets even warmer and we trap some of those layers of smoke at the surface and keep them uh, locked down instead of uh, being able to mix up into the higher uh, parts of the atmosphere, which would be really nice and would really improve the air quality. Not the case for many locations today and probably certainly not tonight. As you look in the interior, more of those smoke stacks there showing up there across the interior. That means more possibilities for dense smoke. Low pressure sitting south of the Alaska Peninsula giving us that southerly flow. No problem with that mixing out here. We've got rain showers and some fog across the area out across the west. Low pressure sitting way out across the western bearing and high pressure in charge of the Gulf, giving us that offshore flow for southeast, probably getting some fog along the outer coast, but most likely a little bit of clearing there across most of the inside passages. For Thursday, high pressure is still going strong, 1,021 millibars across the interior. We're going to see smoke across uh, most of the Yukon Valley and a large part across the upper Kuskokwim, probably into the Tanana Valley and certainly around south central there, so be mindful of that. High pressure sitting over the Gulf is keeping that southerly flow going up the west coast. Showers fairly widespread across the Chukchi coast and moving into the Brooks Range, probably places like Ambler, all the way into Shishmaref and Kotzebue, looking at some at least some dreary weather there. And as we get into Friday, high pressure is moving across the Arctic and into the Beaufort Sea Coast. That should draw in an easterly flow across the coast. That could also move the uh, ice around a little bit, so keep watch on that if you're heading out. Showers will continue across the Chukchi Coast and into St. Lawrence Island. Hit and miss cloud cover across the YK Delta. Showers for the Alaska Peninsula. And here's that extra lobe of high pressure. Once this moves away, it's going to rejoin this broader area of high pressure across the interior in the Gulf and strengthen this as we get into the weekend. And that means a better chance for more heat and possibly record setting heat across south central and southeast. So what are we talking about? We're talking about temperatures in the morning. It's going to be fairly mild, 40s and 50s for south central and southeast. The interior holding on to temps in the 50s and even lower 60s. Early Thursday morning, 30s and 40s for the North Slope, not too bad there. 55 in Nome and close to 50 for the Alaska Peninsula, 45 around St. Paul. Afternoon high temperatures on Thursday, back in the lower 80s for many locations. Could be even warmer across the interior and south central. Southeast, again, some of these numbers have gone up a little bit since we uh, were last looking at these. Uh, upper 70s to lower 80s, not out of the question for southeast on Thursday morning. Record heat is possible. As we get into Friday morning once again, lower to mid 50s at least for the interior, pushing the upper 50s for parts of the interior west, 30s and 40s in the north, south central, mid to upper 50s at least overnight, southeast, very mild to start your Friday morning. Afternoon heat back in the 70s and 80s again for Friday afternoon in southeast and south central and many in the interior. Stay cool. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. And on your aviation charts, the next several days really aren't going to change a whole lot. A lot of hot and dry air across the interior. We are going to see smoke. That's not going to be showing up on uh, the flying weather chart here, but we will talk about it there uh, again as we get around uh, to your surface charts again at the end of the show. But IFR conditions will be holding from St. Lawrence Island all the way down to the Pribilovs, most of the chain, most of the Gulf Coast, at least very close to the northern and eastern sections especially. Marginal areas uh, just inside the outer coast of southeast all the way into Prince William Sound and around the coastal areas of uh, the Kenai Peninsula and into Prince William Sound over Kodiak Island and across some of our northwestern capes and into Kotzebue Sound and along the North Slope. Now notice there is a little bit of a patchy area of VFR around uh, Ukiavik and westward toward Wainwright. You'll see that fill back in as we get into Thursday afternoon with IFR conditions coming in from the west. IFR will break up here and there across the Bering Sea, mainly along Adak and Atkin and the south-facing coast from Nikolsky to Unalaska and Dutch Harbor. IFR is still sitting tight right over uh, Sand Point and areas close to Cold Bay and False Pass. And IFR across the Gulf, watch for some areas of convection, maybe thunderstorms, but certainly convection across the central and uh, southern parts of southeast with VFR continuing, save for smoke, across most of the interior north and south included. Now, as we get into Friday morning, IFR presses inward a little bit more over the Brooks Range, heading for Ambler, uh, look for IFR conditions across the northern coast. VFR for most areas, though, for the eastern Brooks Range and probably seeing some changes there for Anaktuvik and Adigan Pass. Uh, for the Yukon Valley, still looking pretty good, save for smoke. 
Marginal conditions over the Kenai Peninsula again, watching out for smoke in that area with the temporary flight restrictions in place, of course. An IFR across the uh, central and western bearing and across the central and eastern gulf with generally VFR conditions for southeast. That doesn't change a whole lot as we go into Friday afternoon. Watch for areas of IFR to be fairly thick across St. Lawrence Island, down toward the Pribilovs, Nunavak Island, and most of Bristol Bay, with marginal conditions over the Alaska Peninsula itself and creeping into the southwestern capes. VFR continues across the interior and most of southeast, so not a whole lot of change. Anaktuvik and Attigan Pass uh, look pretty similar. We're going to say Anaktuvik Pass though, leans over to marginal levels, though. As we go into Thursday, you'll see a similar trend on Friday. Attigan Pass though, looks to be VFR, so if you've got to pick one, go with Attigan Pass. Uh, Lake Clark and Merrill Pass, we're calling VFR through the entire day. Rainy Pass, Windy Pass, Isabel Pass, <laughs> Mentasta Pass, all look to be pretty good tomorrow. Tanita Pass, we're going to call VFR. As you get into Portage Pass, things look pretty good there. And Chilkoot and White Pass right now look to be pretty good. We're going to watch for an isolated chance for a, uh, some convective activity, maybe even a thunderstorm in the region. Freezing levels show a lot of warm air is sitting right on top of Alaska. Levels are anywhere from 10 to about 12,000 feet across the west. You can see that warm air extends well down to the south. Levels up to the north are starting to warm up. This was a big dent in that warm pattern here. Levels down to about 2,000 feet yesterday. That is warming up very quickly, and you can see levels don't fall off very quickly out to the west. So we are fully engulfed in this uh, very warm pattern across Alaska. And because of that, even though there is icing, uh, possible. You're going to have to go way high up there, about 10,000 feet to find that off of the west coast of Alaska and across the central and eastern chain and the Alaska Peninsula. Uh, severe icing is always possible in the vicinity of thunderstorms though, so be careful about that if you're flying around in the southeast tomorrow and thunderstorms do develop. Now, uh, an omega blocking pattern is what you see here. It looks kind of like a crazy octopus with the arms stretching out on either side. Here's the octopus head, the high pressure ridge sitting right across mainland Alaska there and what that means for us is warm air is being pulled in from the south and being pushed right over south central and the interior and southeast keeping things very warm and very dry. The problem with the crazy octopus here is crazy octopus does not like to get out of the way very quickly and because of that you have active weather building out here and active weather going over here but really not a whole lot of movement right in here so this pattern gets stuck and stays put for a long time and hopefully uh, we won't see it a whole lot longer, but it does look like it's going to carry in through the weekend at least. Southerly winds coming up the west coast at 9,000 feet, 20 to 40 knots. Westerlies across the interior and southerlies across southeast, 10 to 20 knots there. Uh, north and westerly winds coming across the Beaufort are some of the strongest there at 25 knots. You can see those also blowing at about 15 to 30 at 3,000 feet. High pressure sitting right across the interior here in south central. Light winds moving offshore over southeast over most of south central in the Copper River Valley in the interior. The west coast still looking at southerlies 30 to 35 knots at their strongest and more of a west and southwesterly wind. A little bit of a kick from the wind here around the central and western chain up to 50 knots in the vicinity of low pressure out west. And that's where we find turbulence again below 4,000 feet. Some of that considerable moderate. Same goes for the Alaska Peninsula, St. Lawrence Island, and the Seward Peninsula below 4,000 feet. A little bit of chop on the Beaufort and watch out for storms in southeast. Welcome back to another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder and joining me once again is Eric Stevens from the Geographic Information Network of Alaska or GINA based at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. Eric, welcome back to the show. Well, Dave, it's great to be back. Thanks for inviting us again. Sure thing. And, and today we want to talk about identifying burn scars. That would be the, the burned up area after a wildfire when the flames and the smoke are gone. We can see it if you drive by it on the roadway, of course, but uh, from satellite, we can also identify those, uh, those places on the land, right? You know it. Um, you know that expression, ouch, that's going to leave a mark? Yeah. Uh, after you bang your knee uh, getting out of the car? You, oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, the ouch, it's going to leave a mark, that also applies to the landscape. Whenever a wildfire ravages through, it's going to leave a mark on mm -hmm. the landscape. After a wildfire burns out, this is called a burn scar. Okay. And you can ask yourself, well, that's interesting. We can see a burn scar from space. Right. Um, then the question is, well, why right. does that matter? Okay. Who cares? Yeah, fire's over. They're, right, the fire is over. Mm -hmm. We don't need to worry about this anymore. It turns out you kind of do, okay. because burn scars are important. Uh, there's this old rule of thumb in the weather business that flood follows fire. Okay. The action of the fire in, in killing off the vegetation, in baking, uh, kiln drying the landscape a little mm -hmm. bit, can hinder the land's ability to absorb rainfall. So, if you have a fire, 
especially if it's in complex mountainous terrain. Right. This is classic in California. Mm -hmm. It can happen somewhat in Alaska too. You get a wildfire in, in steep hilly or mountainous terrain, rips off all the lands, or off the uh, vegetation off the landscape. Mm -hmm. Then six months later, there's a big rainstorm and you get a flash flood in that area. So right. flood can follow fire. That's why you gotta okay. know where the burn scars That's important. are. Secondly, a fire needs fuel to maintain itself. So mm -hmm. if there's an old burn scar left over from a year or two ago, and then another summer later here in Alaska in the interior, mm -hmm. it's a big wildfire season. If there's a fire advancing toward an old burn scar, well, guess what? That old burn scar is going to be tougher terrain for that new fire to get through because there's not right. as much fuel okay. in that burn scar. So they almost act like a natural fire break. These are a couple of reasons why you need to know where those burn scars are. Alaska Fire Service has limited resources. They want to put their people and their equipment sure. where it does the most good. They need to know, well, this is an area where there's no burn scar. We better put people here because that fire could really run. So That's really, we really important for uh, weather forecasters and fire weather forecasters, for sure. Oh, yeah. But then how do we weather satellites actually detect those burn scars? Ah, good question. Thanks. Well, let's, let's turn the Wayback Machine to the summer of 2015. That okay. was a very active year. We've got a picture here taken up in the White Mountains. This is uh, one of the fires in progress that summer. Mm -hmm. And if you look real close, you can almost see Frodo throwing the ring into <laughs> right. the no kidding. volcano there. So that's uh, quite the vision. Well, let's look at a visible image. Here we are okay. in Alaska's interior. This is before the fires got out of the cage mm -hmm. in early summer of 2015. Let's zoom in to the western interior here. Again, this is a weather satellite image of visible light, what the right. human eye can see. Okay. We're into the middle reach of the Yukon Valley there in the western interior, Galena area. And this is just a beautiful visible day. Uh, nothing much going on. It's, it's early. It's in early June before the fires really yeah. got active. But then in 2015, the fires got loose, especially in that western interior. Right. Here's another image. Mm -hmm. The same satellite pass okay. as that visible image, but now we're not quite looking at visible light. Very different. There's a slight change here. This image incorporates something called the veggie band. Okay. 0.86 micron wavelength. The micron's very tiny, yeah. but that wavelength responds to vegetation, the chlorophyll. So trees oh. and grasses reflect that part of the electromagnetic spectrum back to the satellite. And so the satellite sees that. When signal comes at that wavelength to the satellite, we know, ah, there's some vegetation growing there. This is great. You can identify coastlines so easily because you go from vegetation to water. Um, turns out if you have a burn scar, guess what? Mm. You've burned away the vegetation, so okay. that's going to show up. We're going to do a before, during, and after kind of look here. And so okay. we're looking at before. So in this image, we've got a lot of green out there. That's wonderful. Right. Another fun thing about this kind of imagery is you can see down in the Alaska Range in the southeast oh. corner of the image, it's blue. Yeah. That's glaciers and snow oh, in the course. mountains. Okay. So this is not really what the human eye can see. This mm -hmm. is a, these wavelengths are beyond human vision, but we've, we've made them look certain colors. So the, the vegetation looks green. Now let's look at that same kind of satellite mm -hmm. uh, recipe, but during the fires. This is in July. The fires are loose. You can see the smoke in the middle of the image, the smearing look of the smoke. And then we can see some clouds that are white. Uh, icy yeah. clouds are blue. So this is in July of 2015. The fires are doing their thing. We're okay. burning up millions of acres. Now let's go to September. The fires are out. The audience has left the theater. You know, the event's over, right? right. We're done. But guess what? Now look at those brown oh, patches. Look at that. All of those places are where the fire has burned away the vegetation. So you can see where the fire is, where you can add the, up these perimeters, get acreage burned mm -hmm. and such. And so that's good to know. Now remember, flood follows fire, and these are also natural fire breaks. So you need to know where these guys are. In the course of the 2015 summer season, we went from before with not much burn scar in this area to just a couple months later, we can see so much burn scarring on the landscape. What's interesting, wow. too, about the satellite and looking at burn scars is you, you realize that burn scars are the gift that keeps on giving. Uh -huh. You can forget that a couple of years ago, maybe there was a fire in a certain area, but the satellite won't forget. So in the summertime, we get wildfires in Alaska, but guess what? Um, in, the, in the visible imagery here, we can see the burn scars just a little bit, but they're not as prominent as in that veggie band. But then you can't see them at all if you cover them up with snow, right? right. Exactly. So here's exactly. an image. Okay from the middle of the winter oh, time, wow. and snow on the ground by this, this recipe mm -hmm. looks blue. Again, these are wavelengths of light that the human eye can't really see. We're getting up into the infrared, near infrared, and the way we've assigned colors is if there's snow on the ground or there's a glacier, it looks blue, kind of intuitive. So this is uh, 
early April of the following year, 2016. Okay. We're just about to get into breakup. We've got a lot of snow on the ground. It's now it's all going to melt. And as the snow melts, then you get our final image here. Mm -hmm. Doesn't this look familiar? This looks like a lot of what we saw in September okay. of the previous summer. So this mm -hmm. is the spring of the next year. Okay. These, the fires themselves might not have overwintered. They're gone, but the right. fire scar does. Yep. And as the snow melts away, and then we have, you have breakup, and then you have green up, uh -huh. when every, the leaves come out, the grass comes back, except in the burned areas, they're having a tough time because everything got burned off the previous year. So you can see these scars even sure. the next summer, multiple years. It depends on how, what kind of vegetation there is. You know, mm -hmm. some of the tussocky tundra grasses, they'll grow back really quick. But to get a, a forest to come back, that'll take much longer. So these burn scars, eventually the, the landscape will, will fill in the burn scar. It will heal itself, if you want to use that metaphor. Mm -hmm. But uh, for the next few years, you can still keep track of these on satellite. And again, the reason we want to do that is that uh, the burn scar can facilitate a flood right. and it can act like a, a fire break. So there you are, the veggie band. tools. So if you're a weather satellite and you're looking at my uh, bowl of vegetables here, you might be able to pick out which one's the pea, which one's the tomato, and which one's the carrot and, and apply that information uh, precisely to whatever it is you're, you're working on there. That is really fascinating stuff that we have that capability from so high above the planet Earth and right. Alaska for that matter. Yep. Eric, Eat your veggies. Yes, definitely. I think I will. I'm hungry. Thanks so much for joining us again, Eric, and thank you for joining us for another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. We'll see you right here next time. And now, marine weather around Alaska. And on your sea ice update now, you'll still see some higher concentration ice from about Prudhoe Bay westward Ukiavik, but marginal ice is opening up now north of Kaktovik, and you can see that creeping north and west. Remember by Friday, as we are looking at the surface charts earlier, high pressure will be in place, and that means more of an easterly flow. So a lot of this could be on the move, and that could make some more room for that uh, higher concentration pack ice to move around as well. Same goes for out around the Chukchi Coast. We're going to have more of a south and easterly flow, so a lot of what you see here could be on the move as we get into Thursday and Friday, so keep watch on that. For the very latest information anytime, head to the Alaska Sea Ice Program's website, weather.gov slash anchorage slash ice, and they love to get your observations. Take a look at southeast as we get into Thursday. Light winds will continue across the southern inside passage, 10 knots from the north and west with two foot seas there. Northerlies across the Lynn Canal, a little bit stronger there. And north and westerlies coming down the outer coast, 15 to 20 with about five to six, even seven foot seas. For Friday, look for a northwesterly flow. Yakutat down to Craig, you're looking at about four to six foot seas on the outside. On the inside, winds go light with high pressure in charge. It is going to be a very warm day. Small seas there. Two foot seas expected really from the Lynn Canal all the way down to Clarence Strait and Stevens Passage, five to ten knots tops. As you look at south central, light winds are already in place by Thursday. Westerlies across Prince William Sound with two foot seas, 15 to 25 knots across the Barrens, about three to six foot seas there, and light westerlies across the Cook Inlet region, about ten knots and two foot seas expected Thursday. Not a big change for Friday, a little bit more of a south and westerly component here across the Barrens, 15 to 20 southwesterlies outside of Resurrection Bay, and light winds across Prince William Sound, ten knots and two foot seas there. And the same goes for areas around the northern parts of Cook Inlet with two foot seas on Friday. Stronger south and easterly flow will be found around the Bristol Bay region, expecting about four to six foot seas there on Thursday. Southwesterlies with eight foot seas inside of Shellacoff Strait, 25 knots on the eastern side of Kodiak Island, up to 30 south of Sand Point with uh, 13 foot seas on Thursday. You'll see that improving as we get into Friday as that gradient relaxes a little bit. Low pressure is kind of fanning out a little bit more. And west and southwesterly should be expected into parts of Bristol Bay. Uh, 10 to 20 knot wind on the Pacific coast of the Alaska Peninsula. We're still going to keep those stronger southwesterlies inside of Shelikov Strait. 25 knots, 8 foot seas there, 6 foot seas east of Kodiak Island on Friday. For the chain, west and southwesterlies will be the rule. Some stronger winds here south of Unalaska to Nikolsky with 25 knots and 11 foot seas. A little bit more of a southerly flow west of Adak all the way out toward Shemya, 25 knots, 6 to as high as 9 foot seas as we get into your Thursday afternoon. And you see that picks up with strengthening low pressure out here in the west. Remember, we've got a blocking high out to the east, so the only way this is going to move is if it strengthens or it falls apart. It's choosing to strengthen right now. 12 foot seas here across the west with 30 knot winds. 
15 to 20 across the central and the east with westerly staying strong uh, from Unalaska to Nikolski there. Eight to about uh, six to eight foot seas, let's say, south of the chain. Five to seven foot seas on the northern side. For the west coast, a southeasterly offshore flow will continue. 15 to 20 all the way from the Norton Sound region to St. Lawrence Island. 15 to 20 from St. Matthew in the Pribble Office there with six to seven foot seas. Eight foot seas a little bit higher outside the Kuskokwim Delta at 30 knots. As we get into Friday, look for a wind to shift around just a little bit more to the south and southwest. And that could bring some of the water a little bit closer to uh, parts of Norton Sound. Three to five foot seas there, nothing really too significant. Five to eight foot seas from the Pribilovs up to St. Matthew. 15 to 25 knots, generally from the south. A little bit more of a westerly push here inside of the Kuskokwim Delta on Friday. And for the North Slope now, easterlies across the Beaufort Sea Coast, still looking at small seas, two to three feet, 10 to 15 knots. And southerlies across the Chukchi Coast, anywhere from 15 knots or so to 20 down around the Bering Strait with about five maybe four foot seas the further north you go by friday there's that easterly component again 10 to 15 knots across the beaufort two to three foot seas expected and that south and southeasterly flow working its way up the chukchi coast 15 to 20 knots with four to five foot seas tops as you get into your friday and saturday recapping the weather where you are smoke is really going to be the big picture tonight for most areas in the interior You're going to see a lot of that same goes for the kenai peninsula uh, including areas down toward seward and certainly into Anchorage and uh, areas around Soldotna and Sterling. So be careful with that. Uh, check 511.alaska.gov for the very latest travel information. There will be delays across the Kenai Peninsula for sure. Rain continues in the west. Winds won't be terribly strong, but low pressure sitting south of the Alaska Peninsula is on the move. It will gradually fall apart as we get into Thursday. Smoke continues across the interior and south central, and high heat is coming. As we get into Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, many more locations will be towing the line to get closer and closer to potentially record highs for south central and southeast. Watch for a few showers, maybe even a storm across some of the higher terrain in the Panhandle. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbormaster before you go boating.